Okay, in this video we're going to discuss linear systems of equations and more specifically we are going to use our graphing calculator with the table and the graph to solve these linear systems. In this first example we have our line, two lines and we have them in y equals. Remember that our job here is to solve these linear systems is to find where these two lines cross if they cross at all. We can immediately tell since these are in y equals we simply look at the slopes the slopes are different so if we apply y1 y1 to be this negative 2x plus 2 and y2 to be x minus 4 we can look at their slopes and we can tell that they're not equal equal notice that if we um, have we look at this line we have a slope of 1 here and we have a slope of negative 2 here right so we know that the slopes are different so these lines should cross so now we can just move forward from there so we put negative 2x plus 2 in y1 so we're gonna do that here negative 2x plus 2 in y1 and we're gonna put this one in y2. Okay, so we have x minus 4 in y2. Now we can graph it. I'm going to, I'm not sure how my window is set, so I can always do a zoom 6, and that will be a standard 10 by 10 graphing window. Okay, so the way that that graphed, we notice that our y1, negative 2x plus 2, is right here. We can see that because it has a negative slope, so we can immediately pick it out. We can see that our uh, x minus 4 it has a positive slope, so it's going through right here. And we see that the point of intersection is right here. All right, I'm going to bring this graph over so that we can work with it a little bit. All right, so we've got our graphing picture here, and we see that the intersection is right there, just like that. So now we need to find this intersection. The way that we do that is we hit the second button on our calculator, second, then trace. Choose option five right here for intersect. Okay, so I'm just going to press five on my calculator. It says, it asks, your calculator will ask you questions right here. And you need to look at this to determine what you need to do. The, the standard sequence is second trace, option five, enter three times. But let's talk about why we hit enter three times after we select the intersection. You can see it's asking me for the first curve. That means what line is the first line that I want it to look for? And it's flashing on that one, so I just hit enter. Calculator will then jump to the second line. Notice it's asking me second curve. Is this the right one? I hit enter to tell my calculator, yes, that's where I want you to look. It asks me for a guess. You can arrow closer to where it intersects, but you really don't have to. So just hit enter here for the guess, and your calculator will find the intersection. And you can see that that occurs right here at 2, negative 2. So let's bring this over. Okay, so our calculator has found the in intersection to be 2, negative 2. So our solution, our solution to this system of equations is... 2, negative 2. So the solution is 2, comma, negative 2. That means that this, these two lines intersect when x is 2 and y is negative 2. And we can see that right here on our graph. Now, if we bring our table up, we could have done the same thing. So if we just started with our table, we can see um, we have y1 in here. Remember that y1 is negative 2x plus 2 and y2 is x minus 4. So when we, what we want to find here is when is y1 and y2 equal. We can see that y1 right here is a positive value. y2 is a negative value. So we're just looking through our table here. We see that y1 is decreasing and that y2 is increasing. So we know we're too far apart up here. So we need to keep moving down in our table. And finally, we see the intersection right here. When x is 2, y1 and y2 are both equal. So there's my solution again, 2 comma negative 2. So let's bring this over here in our picture. So these two, whether you're using the graph or the table, 
our answer is going to be the same. Okay. So there's our answer right there. Now the important part to remember when you're trying to decide whether the graph or the table would be better, the advantage of the graph when you're using the graph to find the intersection is that if this solution were to be a decimal, you are, you are not going to see it in the table unless you have your table setting set up just right so that that decimal appears. However, the graph will always find the intersection. So let's say that this intersection was at x equals 2.25 and y equals negative 3.1. Well, your graphing calculator graph portion will find that intersection for you perfectly, whereas in the table you wouldn't be able to find it. But I want you to be able to see both methods and how you would utilize those. Okay, I'm going to pause the video now and we will look for um, another example to do. All right, here we have another example. We have y equals 2x minus 8, and we have y equals negative x plus 1. So in this case, we still apply uh, y1, in our case, is going to equal 2x minus 8, and y2 is going to equal negative x plus 1. Okay, we can look at the slopes immediately. And since these are already in y equals, we know that if we're going to use our calculator, the table and or the graph is the uh, correct way to do it. So we need to put these in y equals. And we can look at the slopes before we uh, waste our time, possibly. And we see that these slopes are different, so we know that we're going to find that these two lines cross at some point. If the slopes were the same, that would mean either that they are parallel lines and they will never cross so there would be no solutions or <clears throat> that they ha are the exact same line and they have infinite solutions so the slopes are different so that we know we can find an intersection so let's do that we're going to start by putting uh, this one in y1 so we have 2x minus 8 in our calculator here next line will be negative x plus 1 all right, so let's graph them. We'll, we'll use the graph method first. Actually, let's use the table method first this time. So second graph gives us our table. Okay, so we see that y1, 2x minus 8, should be increasing. As x increases, this one should increase because it has a positive slope here of 2. This one, negative x, should be decreasing as x increases because we have a negative 1 slope here. So let's see if we can find this solution. Uh, it actually appears right here on the screen. You can see it crosses at the point 3, comma, negative 2. Look right here. We have uh, y1 and y2 are equal. Remember, that's what we're looking for in our table whenever we're using that to solve systems. So, uh, we can see that our solution appears right here when x is 3 and y is negative 2. So we can already tell that the solution will always be x comma y. It will be an ordered pair where the two lines cross and in this case it's 3 comma negative 2. Alright, now let's use our graph to do the same thing. We graph the line, there's our 2x minus 8. There's our negative x plus 1. Of course, this has a negative 1 slope, crosses through the y-intercept here is plus 1. We can see that here. Our 2x minus 8 has a slope of 2, so it's a steeper line. It's a positive slope, and it has a y-intercept of negative 8. So here is our intersection right here in quadrant 4. Remember, the quadrants are quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. So our, our intersection is in quadrant 4. We will, ha we will have a positive x-coordinate and a negative y-coordinate right here. And we already know that. We can see that with our solution. So let's find it with the calculator. Second, trace, option 5, enter three times. We've talked about why we hit enter three times. And it tells us the intersection is 3 comma negative 2. So we have used our graphing calculator and found the solution. So that solution appeared right here. And our calculator tells us the answer right here, 3 comma negative 2. All right, let's look at uh, one more uh, example here. 
Okay, in this next example, we have two standard form lines with x and y on the same side. It, normally, and we would use, if we're using our graphing calculator to solve this, we would use the matrix method in our calculator. We will talk about that in the next video. So on this one, uh, since we're using y equals and our table or graph, we need to get y by itself here. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's, we're going to use this. Um, We'll apply this one as y1, and this one will be y2. So we need to get this uh, equation in y equals here. So we'll start with negative 3y minus x equals 3. And over here we'll do y2, which is 6y plus 2x equals negative 18. All right, so let's, let's work on getting y by itself. First thing we'll do is add x to both sides, add x to both sides. Okay, strike that out, bring everything down. We have negative 3y equals 3 plus x. Okay, next step, divide by negative 3, divide this by negative 3, divide this by negative 3. Strike this out, bring our y down. We have y equals 3 divided by negative 3 is a negative 1. And Remember that when we have x like this, x over negative 3, I'm going to write this off to the side, x over negative 3, remember that we have an implied 1 right here. So this is the same thing as negative 1 third x. Okay, so we've got a minus 1 third x here. We can re rearrange this a little bit so it's in our normal y equals mx plus b format. So that would be y equals negative one-third x minus one. Okay, now let's work on this one. So we have 6y plus 2x, 2x equals negative 18. Let's subtract 2x from both sides. That's our first step. Subtract 2x. All right, strike that out. Bring everything down. We have 6y equals negative 18 minus 2x. Divide by 6 is our last step. Divide by 6 and divide by 6. Strike that out and we have y equals negative 18 divided by negative 6 is a negative 3. Negative 3 and negative 2 divided by 6 would give us a negative 1 third. So negative 1 third x. Rearrange it so that we're in mx plus b uh, with our x term listed first, negative 1 third x minus 3. Okay, so now we've got them both in y equals. Now, let's analyze this situation before we waste our time putting this into the calculator. Okay, look, we have a negative 1 third slope here, and we have a negative 1 third slope here. So the slopes are the same. So either these two lines are exactly the same and there will be infinite solutions or they are different and they but parallel so they're different lines but parallel so they will never cross. Well in this case you see that we have a y intercept of negative 1 here and a y intercept of negative 3 here so the lines are different but this will be no solution. No solution because these two lines are parallel and therefore they will never cross. If you see this in your graphing calculator, let's put it in, negative one-third x for y1 minus 1. We've got a slope of negative one-third and a y-intercept of negative 1. The next line has a negative one-third slope. Uh, and a y-intercept of negative 3. So we graph this. They both have negative one-third slopes. That's going through negative one. That one's going through negative three as a y-intercept. And you see these two lines are parallel. They will never cross. And therefore, our final answer here is no solution. Okay, one more example here in a second. And we'll call this video done. Okay, here we are with another example. So we have two lines in standard form again with x and y on the same side. So since we are focused on using our calculator with the graph and table method on this video, we need to get y by itself in order to uh, put these in y equals and, and investigate these lines. So let's do that. We're going to call x plus 4 y equals 4 y1. So x, x plus 4 y equals 4. And 
i or y2 will be negative 2x minus 8y equals negative 8. Okay, so we're going to get x and y on the same side. Start by subtracting x. Strike this out, bring everything down. 4y equals 4 minus x. Last step, divide by 4, divide that by 4, and divide that by 4. Strike that out, and we have y equals 1 minus 1 fourth x. Remember that x over 4 is the same thing as 1 fourth x. So rearrange this one a little bit more to get it where our x term is first. So negative 1 fourth x plus 1. So we have a slope of negative 1 fourth and a y-intercept of 1 on that one. All right, let's look at this second one. First thing we need to do to get y by itself, add 2x, add 2x. Remember, you can't add negative 8 and 2x directly together, so that's why I always ask my students to write the add 2x off to the side so they don't get confused and try to add negative 8 and 2, because we can't do that. X's are X's, and numbers are numbers, and Y's are Y's. We cannot combine them. Okay, so we have negative 8y equals negative 8 plus 2x. Divide by negative 8 as our last step. Divide everything by negative 8. Also, I want my students to put a division bar beneath each term, not one long bar, because I want them to remember that you have to divide everything by negative 8 when you're doing this. We don't want to we don't want to mess this up and lose practice on our proper algebraic methods. Okay, so we have y equals negative 8 divided by negative 8 is 1 plus 2 divided by a negative 8 is a negative one-fourth, so I need to erase that. That's not right. We're not going to have a plus there. We will have a minus here. So minus one-fourth x. Let's rearrange this. y equals negative one-fourth x plus one. Okay, now let's analyze these lines before we start putting them in our calculator. We have a negative one-fourth slope here. Remember, our first step is look at the slopes. Let's analyze this. Negative one-fourth slope here, negative one-fourth slope here. So immediately our alarm's going off. We, we have either infinite solutions or no solutions here. So then we check our y-intercept, and we have a plus one y-intercept here plus one y-intercept here, and we have a plus one y-intercept here. So that means that we have the exact same line. So y1 and y2 are exactly the same line. So that means infinite, infinite solutions. Infinite solutions. Okay? So that means that these are exactly the same line. So let's look and let's put these in. I mean, it's pretty obvious, I think, for you to see that these lines are going to be the same. Negative 1 fourth x plus 1. They have the exact same y-intercept, the exact same slope. Therefore, they are exactly the same line. They are not any different in any way. Okay, so we see here that we'll graph this. It graphs y1 graphs y2 right on top of it and when we look in our table you can see that the reason it's infinite solutions is this thing is stacked on top so y1 and y2 are always the same for no matter what value of x y1 and y2 are always the same so that is why there are infinite solutions to this system no matter what value of x you plug in right here and what value of y you plug in right here, this system will always be true. Look, x is negative 2, y1 and y2 are the same. So that's a solution to this system. If you put negative 2 right here and 1.5 here, that will make this equation true. If you put negative 2 here and 1.5 here, that will make this uh, equation true. So no matter what value you will have an infinite number of solutions. No matter what value of x you plug in, y1 and y2 will always be the same. Look, 0, 1, and 1, 1, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 2, 0.5, and 0.5. So it is always the same. That is why it is infinite solutions. That means no matter what value of x, y1 and y2 are always going to be the same. Okay? So hope that makes sense. All right, we'll call this video a wrap, and I'll see you in the next video.